You can give us new movies, your news, titles, going to theaters, DVD, and along with local the box office, social media gamers. Up, guys, back with new news. Let's get to it. Last week of April, people. Yeah, great. May starts on Sunday. And don't worry, people. I'll get my uh, movies in May video out. Probably getting out today for all I know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's get to new releases. I'll let me scroll through all of them. Beep, beep, beep. All the ones here are coming out on the tw on Friday, April 29th. All right, the first one is Keanu. This is a this is a feature. This is a the feat. This is um, it stars directed by Peter Antincio. If I pronounce any names wrong, comp with proper pronunciation. Oh, and yeah, I got some new decorations. Clapper board. The rating sign. If you can look at it, it's a uh, G. General audiences. All audiences made to get the idea. I got some new decorations. If you didn't see my uh, update video. Also got a new shelf, but no one cares about that. You're not seeing. You're not. You're not gonna see my videos with that in the frame, except for that update video. But that's it. Anyways, yeah, uh, this has a uh, Keegan Michael Key, uh, Jordan Peele, Method Man, Luis Guzman, Will Forte, Jason Mitchell, other people I don't care about. Seventy-five percent, sixteen reviews. You know, you know about it. You know, like a uh, Jordan, like a uh, gets a got gets a finds a cat named. Like he finds a stray cat, he names it Keanu, and one day it gets taken. Like, and like you know, he shows it to his friend. One day, and like one time, one day gets taken and becomes a gangster pet. And as a result, they try. Key, uh, Key and Peel try to pass on his gangsters in order to get the cat back. I saw my intro; it was pretty entertaining, I guess. But I mean, this feels like something more that could end up being like a sketch. Is this able to last for like an hour forty minutes? For what I'm saying here, I don't know if it's an hour forty minutes for real, but that's what I'm saying here. Could it work? The reviews suggest maybe, but I don't know, I'm not extremely up for it. Maybe I'll give it a chance, but so far, I mean, it kind of gets to my attention, but it's not really a comedy that's high on my list, okay? It's hard for me to get excited about comedies, but maybe. Next one's Mother's Day. This is this is directed by Gary Marshall, and it has a huge ensemble cast. Julia Roberts, Jason Sudeikis, Jennifer Aniston, Kate Hudson, Britt Robertson, uh, Timothy Oliphant. Other people has one good review so far. That's really it. That's the only one posted. I mean, I've heard some. When it comes to Gary Marshall, I don't know if I what films I've seen from him. I've not seen Pretty Woman. Sorry. I don't know. I mean, it's a stacked cast, but I mean, for some reason, it's just not selling me. Usually, these ensemble cats comedies just fail. And Gary Marshall's had a pretty bad track record, so it's just not hitting me. Sorry. Maybe. All right. Next one is Ratchet and Clank. And you may know about it, it's an adaptation based on the gaming duo of the same name and the game series of the same name. It has, you know, the name, I think it has the voice actors back playing the roles. James, the you know, voice actors, James Arnold Taylor and David Kay. It also has people like uh, Bell Thorne, Sylvester Stallone, uh, Paul Giamatti, John Goodman, Rosario Dawson, or what have you. Uh, it has one good review so far. And let me go ahead and say, Hollywood's had a horrible tracker of video game movies, and there's a ton coming out, and... It's hard for me to get excited for this movie. It has one good review, so maybe that's a step in the right direction. I don't know. It's just one good review. I have nothing else to comment on that. They've had such a horrible track of review game movies, so let's just hope for the best. Maybe it'd be the first good one. True good one. Not like a guilty pleasure or anything like that. Hopefully. Next one is Green Room. Now, this isn't really getting a new release. It's getting a wide release. It's written, it's, you know, it's written directed by Jeremy Saulnier, who wrote and directed Blue Room, which I've yet to see. I will. Has an 87% 90 reviews. Green Room delivers unapologetic genre thrills with uncommon intelligence and powerful acted Alan. It has Mark Webber, Imogen Poots, Ots, whatever. Olivia Shawcat, Anton Yelkin, Patrick Stewart, Joe Cole, Macon Blair, other people. Um, I didn't really, I watched bits of the trailer, maybe I forgot about it, but it comes off as interesting to me, and knowing the fact I saw like a Mariana gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars definitely intrigues me. I do want to see it. So maybe I could see. Maybe I could see. My birthday's coming up soon as well. Maybe I could see my birthday. Who knows? I don't know. Next one is *The Man Who Knew Infinity*. This has a 68% 19 reviews. It stars uh, Jeremy Irons, Dev Patel, Toby Jones, Stephen Fry, Jeremy Northam, other people. I don't know much about this film. I mean, maybe. I mean, Jeremy Irons was in *Batman v Superman*. Maybe I sh Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Whatever. Death Patel, yeah, his track record's also a bit questionable lately. I mean, you have Chappie, also The Last Airbender. Why? 
I don't know. Maybe I'm worried over nonsense. But, uh, maybe. Maybe it could be good. The reviews are so far decent, but I can't really, I don't have much to go on. Next one, Term Life. This had Peter Billingsley. Why is the name familiar? Is that, is that name familiar to me? Okay, it was it Iron Man, Zathura, and, uh, oh, he was Ralphie in Christmas Story. Directing that? Okay. Okay, it stars Vince Vaughn, Haley Steinfeld, uh, John Favreau, Taraji P. Henson, Jonathan Banks, Bill Paxton, Shia Wiggum, Mike Epps. I don't know much about this. I don't know. I mean, it's nice to Vince Vaughn doing something that isn't like, you know, typical comedy shit, but I mean, how much can that last? I don't know. I'm not really exactly excited for it. Maybe it'll be good. I don't know. We'll wait and see. Next one, The Family Fang. This one, I think, is being released in limited theaters and also on demand. It's directed by Jason Bateman. Starring him, Nicole Kidman, Christopher Walken, Marianne Plunkett. Is that how you pronounce her name? Linda Emmond. Josh Pace. What, Catherine Hahn. Whatever. 75% to all reviews. I did not really see a trailer for this. And, I mean, so far the reviews are so far promising, I guess. But, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it'll be good, but... Not much for me to say at this point. Maybe I'll give it a chance. Maybe my who knows? Maybe my mom's gonna rent it off to man because she's a big fan of Jason Bateman. Whatever. <laughs> Maybe I'll give it a chance. Next one is Doe. So that's Jonathan Price, Philip Davis, uh, other people. Has one has one review posted and it's a positive one. Yay. I I don't know what to think about it. So far. I don't know much about these movies so far. I mean, jeez. Next one is uh, Viva, 100% 10 reviews. Okay, that's kind of caught my attention. Benicio Del Toro is one of the people in there that I know about. Okay. Maybe. Next one is Papa, Hemingway in Cuba. Has one good review posted. That's it. Has Giovanni Ribisi, uh, Minka Kelly, Mariel Hemingway. Fortunately, I don't know much about this. Yeah, there are times where I kind of wish I did. But, hey. Yeah, know everything. Maybe I'll give it a chance. Maybe I'll give it a chance. I don't know. Maybe. So let's go to the DVD releases. April 26th, obviously tomorrow. Right, the first one is Ride Along 2. 15% high reviews. Ride Along 2 presents a cop comedy sequel whose well-matched stars can't break the law of diminishing returns or lock up a script that unabashedly steals from the original. Ice, it's directed by Tim Story. stars Ice Cube, Kevin Hart, Ken Jong, Olivia Munn, Benjamin Brett, other people I don't care about. I did not like the first ride along, so why would I watch this? If it's a sequel, maybe because it's a fucking cash grab. What more do I need to say about it? I just really did not like it that much. I really didn't like it. I didn't really find it funny. I found Kevin Hart to be kind of annoying. He's just a typical Kevin Hart character, and I really wish they'd stop playing these caricatures, because, my god, you can no longer make it fresh. Maybe you can add some personality to it, I don't know. But really, if you're going to be just like the ex be a complete caricature, I don't care. So you're gonna come off either as annoying or you're gonna come off as tiresome after a while. Because it's just tired and cliche overuse and it's just no longer entertaining. <sighs> Can you just try any more people? Tim Story, you made Barbershop. I like Barbershop. Oh no, yeah, Ice Cube? Seriously? Thank God you got Barbershop the next cut. I've been a little busy this week with school, guys, so maybe you're wait till the weekend until you get some reviews. I don't know, we'll wait and see. But I just gonna take this. Alright, the next one is Krampus. This is directed by Michael Doherty. Stars Tony Collette, Allison Tolman, Adam Scott, David Koechner, Conchata Farrell, 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 whatever. 66% 90 reviews. Krampus is gory good fun for fans of non-traditional holiday horror with a fondness for Joe Dante's B-movie classics, even if it doesn't quite have the savage bite its concept calls for. I saw it and I enjoyed it. It's nothing amazing, it had some suspenseful moments, but it did have some unlikable characters, and... The ending didn't really work for me. It had some pretty, it overall had some funny moments, and I overall enjoyed it, but I mean, it's not great. The opening was kind of funny, because I mean, like, all slow motion, crazy, Black Friday shoppers. Yeah, it was a pretty cool idea. I mean, it's not what I call scary, it's something just kind of suspenseful, but I mean, I didn't really, you don't really care much about the characters, because some of them are stupid. The practical effects are pretty cool. They just use practical effects, and they're pretty good. Did you, they also use CGI for small gingerbread men. They actually weren't too bad. I don't know. A lot of problems with these characters that they're very unlikable and you just don't care about them. You really don't. And that's just really sad. I don't know why people think could. I don't know why people think douchebaggery is really something 
that'd be fine and entertaining. It's not really particularly funny unless these characters get punished for it. Yeah. Unless, you have a, unless you're able to create a like, old douchebag. It's not impossible, but I mean... I just don't like those stuff. I enjoyed it. One more drive to say. Not a class. It won't be remembered as classic, but maybe some people, maybe you'll get some sort of cult following. I don't know. I get to see Trick or Treat, which is also another Michael Doherty film. I will. Next one, Son of Saul. This is direct, This is directed by Laszlo Nemes. I don't know. It's a foreign film. Has 96%, 165 reviews. Grimly intense, yet thoroughly rewarding. Son of Saul offers an unforgettable viewing experience and establishes director Laszlo Nemes as a talent to watch. I did want to watch it, but I just never got lucky to see it in theaters, so maybe this will be my chance. I really do want to watch it. I mean, the reviews alone sell me. Really hope that really can't wait to watch it. Next one is The Last Man on the Moon. Um, this is 93%, 8, 40 reviews. Last Man on Earth takes a justifiably reverent look at a largely unexplored chapter in the history of American space exploration and a side of astronauts' lives that's rarely considered. Um... It, I think, I'm going to try to read it off here on Flickster. I don't know if we'll go into all the details, but maybe there's something here. Um, Alright. They're kind of... Sh okay, it's all in, like sharing the story of Eugene Cernan. I think is how it, about him. Like, about his story. That they want to share about his story. Interesting. I mean, I don't know much about it, but maybe I could find it and watch it. Really helped him. Alright, last one is Jane Got a Gun. This is directed by Gavin O'Connor. has a 41% 56 reviews and stars Natalie Portman, Ewan McGregor, Joel Edgerton, Rodrigo Santoro, Noah Imrick, Amrick, whatever. Uh, other people. Yeah, I know about this movie's production problems. This thing was shot back in 2013, people. 2013. Yeah, it had a lot of problems, you know, like, uh, I forgot who the original director was for this movie, but she left. Actually, I'm gonna look it up quickly. Uh, like, I mean, the script was on the blacklist, and it was chosen. It just went through a lot of production issues. You know, it was originally supposed to come out last year, but unfortunately, due to the bankruptcy, unfortunately, due to uh, Relativity Media filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, they unfortunately had to scrap the release. Luckily, you know, the Weinstein Company picked it up and they distributed it and obviously you know it sold out. The film did horribly at the box office. It was poorly received. It just got it just didn't work. Lynn Ramsey, that's what it was. Also had like you know Michael Fassbender was in there. There were issues going on, so yeah, it just that was bad. Very bad. Also they had to replace the cinematographer and they also got uh, some people they also got some people rewriting the script. Like, uh, they got Anthony Tan is doing it, and maybe Joel Edgerton? Though I could be wrong. No, maybe not. He did co-write the script. So, that says, so I guess it may mean something? I don't know. Yeah, it is pretty sexy. I mean, is that potential? I mean, you have such great talent here. And knowing the fact that there are some pretty, there's some pretty good westerns recently. I get to see, I get to watch Slow West, but I will. Yeah, does that potential? And unfortunately, I just, I'm not really looking forward to watching it if I ever get the chance. Sorry. Let's get the box office results. If you want the, the link to the entire trophy in the description below, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to go through as many as I can. Alright, number one is the Jungle Book. Once again, $61,538,821. Not surprised. This thing did very good. Very happy it did. I finally saw it really good. Didn't love it, but I still really liked it. I'll get a review up to you sometime, people. Number two, Huntsman Winter's War. $19,445,035. I never heard the best things about Snow and the Huntsman, and I didn't hear, and I heard even worse things about this, so why the hell would I watch it? The reviews are bad, so no. Sorry. Three, Barbershop the Next got $10,518,254. Yeah, it's doing pretty good at the box office. Yay. Sorry, I ate some pasta earlier. Yeah, I mean, I saw it, liked it, I'll get a review out sometime. Four, Zootopia. Four, Zootopia. Man, this thing's doing. Last year was at number five, now it's at number four. Holy shit. Six million, five hundred seventy-nine thousand four five hundred and forty-five dollars. This thing is still big and it's even and it even did better this week. Wow. Five, the boss. Wow, this is sad. It was at number three last week, now it's at number five. Six million two hundred twenty-eight thousand two hundred five dollars. Not yeah, I never heard good things about this movie, so why the hell would I pay for it? I don't even want to pay a man an A price for it. It's just not me.
Six. Batman Superman Dawn of Justice. Five million Byron, two thousand thirty three dollars. Yeah, I have to say I thought it was okay. Not surprising, it's just going that it's suffering now, but whatever. It's already success worldwide. It's already made its money back, so forget it. Alright? Good. Seven. Criminal. Three million one hundred sixteen thousand seven hundred seventy seven dollars. I don't care to watch this, because the reviews aren't good, so why the hell would I want to watch this? Seriously. Eight. My big factory going to two million ninety six thousand and twenty five dollars. Okay, I don't care. I really don't. Nine. Compadres. One million three hundred ninety seven thousand four hundred thirty four dollars. Okay. I'm gonna skip down a couple. Um, I'm gonna go skip to number sixteen, which is uh, miles ahead. That actually, last week's number twenty three. Six hundred thirty nine thousand thirty two dollars. Plus 227.5%, 20, and 480 more theaters for a total of 527. 15 is everybody wants some. Nine, it was last week, it was at 19. It was $652,690, plus 52.3%, plus 320 more theaters for a four, total of 454. 14, Deadpool. Last week was at 15. The hell? $608,518, and that's interesting. It's still doing not too bad. Interesting. Um, let's, talk about some, let's do a jump down to number 21. Holy crap, Hardcore Henry suffered so badly. 21. Last week's number 11. $282,519. Minus 80.5%. And it closed in 2,496 theaters for... And the only theaters it's still playing is 519. Unfortunately, I could not see it. I did not get lucky. Fuck. I don't know. I wasn't exactly excited for it, but I kind of wanted to check it out in theaters, but whatever. I can wait a couple months for the home media release. I can deal with that. It was a, there is some still playing some theaters like around me, but the, one of the theaters it's playing in is in a bad area, so I reckon so I won't go there. I just I I just don't want to risk my safety just to watch a movie I could watch safely in my home. It is twenty four green room. Last week was at thirty. One hundred ninety one hundred ninety seven thousand four eight dollars plus one twenty four point four percent. Plus 27 more days for 12 30. Yeah, it's definitely expanding. Yeah, like I said, if you want to check out, yeah, that's, that's all the box office results, all the box office results I'm going to go through. If you want to check all the rest of them, the link to it, the link to it will be in the description below. And, uh, oh yeah, I want to talk about some other news. Yeah, that's, this might be a one time thing, who knows? Maybe it'll happen on, on and off, I don't know. They confirmed a sequel to Daddy's Home. Why are they doing that? I don't get it. You know, Sean Anders is coming back to direct. Also, he and John Morris are writing the script again. You know, Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg are coming back. I don't get the point of this. I, I didn't even like... I thought the first... I thought Daddy's Home was really bad. I just didn't like it. I thought it was just very mean-spirited. I didn't find it very funny. I just didn't like many of the characters. And overall, I just didn't enjoy it. I just found it very hard to enjoy. Sorry. If you liked it, good for you. But for me, I couldn't. I just didn't really like it. I just don't get the point of a sequel. And the only fact with the cameo at the end with John Cena. Yeah, that just feels like it's just gonna be the same shit over and over again. It just... It's not necessary. It's just profit... It's the only reason is because, oh, we made a lot of money. Yeah, why... Can you just try harder sometimes or actually greenlit, greenlit sequels you want instead of ones that you, that you people want because you want to make more money? I'm done. I'm sick of this shit. If I have to watch this in theaters, I'm going to just... I'm gonna break my wrist. I'm just gonna lose my shit. I'm sick of this shit. It's really annoying me. I know I can't stop these trends, but I, I really just hate what this, how, how this industry operates today and the shit that they do. I hate these stupid practices. It makes me fucking pissed off. It pisses me off, man. I mean, I want good movies. I don't care about profits. Fuck that. Just give me a good movie, man. If it's not good or if it's bad reviews, you're not getting my fucking money. Sorry. I mean, yeah, I saw the trailer to Do Over. Why? <laughs> Fuck this. You know, I probably might do a review of the entire trailer, but let's just get my hood. Let's get some things that I obviously know here. The action looks kind of soulless and boring. There's gonna be obvious product placement, do a lot of obvious joke, a lot of stupid transparent jokes that just aren't very funny. Actually, funny or not funny at all. Also, Adam Sandler's character just comes off more like an unlikable douchebag. I just don't seem to really. He just, whatever I see here, just comes off more like, an, uh, like a dick. He might just be one of the most hate the worst characters I ever see in movies this year. I don't know. 
I just really, thank God Madison's not doing this in theaters. Maybe it's a small new release, but just thank God, thank God, thank God. They're just not making any wide releases for now, any major releases for now. It's just going to be on Netflix, and I'm not paying for them. Thank me. Whatever, I don't care about them anymore. Anyways, guys, that's uh, movie news for this week. Comment below, uh, what do you think about the new releases? Are you going to see any of them, skip any of them, wait for home media release? Wait the new, like, what, are the, what about the home media releases? Are you going to... Rent any of them, buy any of them, skip them, anything like that. What do you think about our results? Um, if you have any, if you have any predictions, put in the comment section below. Also, what are your thoughts on Daddy's Home 2, and what are your thoughts on the Do Over trailer? Put in the comment section below as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Scratch off more videos.